chapter 17 covers probability models, in particular geometric and binomial probability models. Geometric and binomial probability models are both classified as something called Bernoulli trials. Uh, and these are recognized as such because they meet a certain set of three criteria. So the first of these criteria is that in these trials, there are only two possible outcomes. Okay, and these outcomes are referred to as a success and a failure. Okay, uh, the second criteria is that the probability of success, we use P uh, as the variable to represent that, remains constant throughout these trials. Uh, and then the last criteria, criteria is that all the trials are independent of one another. Okay, if it meets those three criteria, we're dealing with Bernoulli trials, uh, in which case they could be geometric, they could be binomial, and we have to look at the text of the problem to figure out which one it is. So the first we're looking at is the geometric probability model. And this is telling us, or it's asking us to find the probability of the number of trials until we see the first success. Now, I'm gonna hit you with a bunch of information right now, which is gonna be a bit confusing until we do the first example. Uh, so when we're dealing with a probability model that's geometric, we only have one parameter, which is that probability of success. So based on that probability of success, we're gonna get uh, the probability of failure, which we label as Q. And then it's also gonna ask us to find the probability of a first success occurring on a certain trial. So for example, what's the probability that we're shooting at a bullseye and we hit the bullseye um, for the first time on like our fifth shot, okay? We would use this equation, Q to the X minus one power, right, times P, right? So in this case, five would be X. We wanna hit it on our fifth shot. So it would be Q to the fourth power, times P. If we have a 20% chance of hitting the bullseye, we have 80% to the fourth power, which means we missed the first four times and then we hit it on the fifth shot. Okay, expected value for a geometric uh, probability model is one over P, uh, and then we have a standard deviation given by radical Q over P squared. There's also something uh, called an independence condition, it's the 10% condition. This condition comes up over and over again throughout the remaining chapters in the book. Uh, Bernoulli trials must be independent. A lot of times they're not. We're gonna ignore that as long as we're dealing with a sample that's smaller than 10% of the overall population. So it's okay if they're not independent as long as our sample size is small enough. And by small enough, we mean less than 10% of the overall population. So in this problem, we have a bunch of people standing in line for a blood drive. We know that 6% of people have O negative blood. And the first question it asks is, how many people do we expect to have to examine before we find the first person who has O negative blood? So for a problem like this, this is geometric because it's a waiting time problem. It's asking how long it'll take until we find that first person uh, who has O negative blood. Uh, and the expected value can be found by just one over P. P is 0.06, one divided by 0.06 gives us 16.67. So that's the average number of people we'd expect to wait or expect to go through be fine before we find one person with that type of blood. What's the probability that the first O negative donor is found in, in one of the first four people in line? So we have to take all the situations uh, into consideration here. So it could be, the first person, second person, third, or fourth person. And we wanna find probabilities for each of these individually. Okay, so if it's the first person, there's just a 6% chance. For it to be the second person, uh, it means that the first person was not O negative, in which case there was a 94% chance that it was not O negative. Uh, and then we found that the second person was. Okay, third person means we had two that were not O negative, then the third person was O negative. Okay, fourth person, uh, means that we had three that were not O negative, fourth person was. Okay, we add all those up and a total of 0.2193. There's actually a function in our calculator for this. It's called geomet CDF or geometry CDF, depending on which calculator you're in. Uh, it's in the distributions. Um, you can find it in catalog, it's, which is uh, where you pretty much find everything, but it's also in the distributions tab where we find like normal CDF. Okay, we put in two parameters, 0.06, 
for the probability of success, and we're saying we want it on anywhere in the first four trials. Geometric probability models are also known as waiting time problems, where we're waiting until a certain uh, event occurs until we find that specific probability. Um, related to the last problem, we're waiting until the fourth person in line until we find that O negative donor. Right? Or we're saying, how long do we expect to wait until we find an O negative donor? Uh, compare that to the binomial model, which is where we have a specific number of trials that we're completing, and we want to find uh, a specific number of successes. Okay, so in this uh, in this model, we're counting a certain number of successes out of a specific number of trials. Okay, they're still Bernoulli trials, so they still have to meet those three criteria that we mentioned earlier. So in a binomial model, we have two parameters that we're going to define. And when I say that we're defining these, like I said earlier, we define the geometric uh, model with just one parameter, the probability of success. Um, I'm talking about kind of like with the normal model, we always note the mean and the standard deviation. So in the binomial model, to define it, we define it with the number of trials and the probability of success. Okay. Now, also, this equation uh, may or may not look familiar. You have seen it before. It's the equation for uh, a combination. Uh, it would have come up in Algebra 2, which is telling us how many different ways we can arrange um, a certain number of objects chosen out of a sample size event. Okay. Also, this uh, symbol there, that exclamation point, is a factorial. It's telling us to multiply every number uh, from a certain number down to one. So for example, four factorial would be four times three times two times one. Okay, so in the binomial model, uh, the equation is this. So we're gonna do uh, a combination, okay, where we're choosing X items out of N. Then we take the X items that we're choosing and we raise that probability of success to that X power. Okay, and however many items are left over, Okay, which is this n minus x here, we raise q to that power. Okay, expected value for a binomial model is just n times p. The variance is n p q, and standard deviation is the square root of the variance, square root of n p q. This problem also involves a number of people waiting in line for a blood drive, and we still have that same 6% probability that a person is an O negative blood type, making them a universal donor. Now, this is no longer a waiting time problem. Okay, in the previous problem where it was a geometric model, we were finding the probability of waiting until a certain donor, uh, until an event happened, okay, until we found that universal donor. Okay, so it was asking us how many people do we expect to have to wait until we found that universal donor, uh, or what's the probability of not finding that universal donor until the fourth person. Okay, or what's the probability that they're one of the first four people? Okay, those are all waiting time problems. In this problem, we have 20 people in line, so it's giving us a fixed number of, of trials, and it's asking us to find the mean and standard deviation for the number of universal donors in those 20 people. Okay, so the difference here is that we have a fixed number of trials. It's no longer a potentially indefinite, uh, indefinitely long line. Okay, and then the second part, it's saying, uh, what's the probability that there's exactly two or exactly three universal donors in those 20 people? So dealing with the first part, uh, to start, we have 20 people, that's our sample size, P equals 0.06, Q equals 0.94, same as last time. So the mean for a binomial problem uh, is just N times P. So we're doing 20 times 0.06. So in this line of 20 people, we would expect to see 1.2 universal donors. The standard deviation is radical NPQ, which gives us a standard deviation of 1.062. The variance would just be before we square root that, so NPQ outside of the square root. Now, what's the probability that there are exactly two or three uh, universal donors? We have to use the binomial probability equation. So we find these individually. So this is the probability of getting two universal donors, uh, and this is the probability of three, and we want to add that together because it uses the word or here. So for two, we do the combination of two items selected from a total of 20, 
We find this in our calculator in the math section on the 84, that's right below the second button. I think it's two buttons below the second button. On the 89, uh, you hit the second key first, and then I think it's the five. Once you're in that, you're looking for PRB for probability, uh, and then NCR. Okay, uh, you put it in differently in both calculators. Uh, in the 84, you hit 20 first, then the NCR button, then the two. On the 89, you hit NCR, then 20, comma, two. All right, anyway, after that, uh, 0.06 to the second, because we want two of these donors to be O negative. So those are the two that are O negative. The rest of them, the other 18, are not O negative. Okay, same thing for three universal donors. How many ways can we choose three out of 20? Okay, and this is just telling us uh, maybe it's the first three, maybe it's the last three, maybe it's the one exactly in the middle, the first and the last. So there's a bunch of different ways we can choose three out of 20 people. Uh, these are all the different combinations. We can do that. Three uh, O negatives, 17 that are not O negative. Okay, these are each of those probabilities. Added together, we get 0 0.3106, which is our answer. Just like last time, there's a function in our calculator. It's underneath distributions, okay? And we have to do this two times, okay? So in underneath distributions, last time we used the one that said geometric CDF. This one we're using the one that says PDF. I'm gonna explain why in class. Uh, but we would actually have to do this two times. We would have to do it once for the two, once for the three, and then we would have to add them together. So this is really just gonna give us that 0.2246. So it's 20 number of trials, 0 0.06 probability of success. This is saying we want two out of the 20 uh, to be universal donors. Okay, if we did it again with three, we would get that number, and then we'd have to get add it together manually. At this point in the year, a normal model pretty much never goes away. Uh, it's applicable in almost every scenario and almost every chapter that we use moving forward. Um, it's not always quite normal, but we haven't met the other curves yet. Uh, so the key thing that we want to check at this point is just to make sure we have enough area in the tails where uh, it's really filling out the normal model. So we have to check what's called the success failure condition uh, and make sure that we have enough failures and enough uh, successes where we fill out the areas in those tails. So it completes the normal model, completes the full bell curve. So we want to make sure that n times p is greater than or equal to 10. The same thing with n times q. So in other words, uh, in the last example problem, the probability of success was pretty small. Okay, so if n, if our sample size wasn't large enough, we wouldn't get a lot of successes, okay, because our p is only 0.06. So we want to make sure that we have enough successes, okay. In other words, we want a large enough sample size that when we model this, um, we would have enough successes to really model the full bell curve uh, and get enough area in that tail, in those tails there. Okay, same thing with Q, okay, which could be an issue if Q was small instead of P. Okay, another thing just to note is that a, binom a binomial model is for discrete data, a normal model is continuous. So binomial model, we're finding the probability of getting an exact number, which we can't do in a normal mo model. We always want it between two numbers. We're going like to the right of a variable. So we're always doing like two Z-scores. Okay, so we're finding um, the probability that's between two numbers or, or to the right of two numbers, like all the way to the right or to the left of the curve. Okay, unlike a binomial where it's exactly two or exactly three. A certain tennis player makes a successful serve 70% of the time. Assume that each serve is independent of the others. Suppose she serves 80 times in a match. Does this problem meet the criteria for Bernoulli trials? Uh, in the beginning, I had mentioned three criteria for Bernoulli trials. I'm going to list four here uh, just because it's a little easier to remember. Okay, so to help you remember, remember this acronym, BINS. Okay, so the first is, uh, the B is for binary, I is for independent, N is for number, S is for success. Number is specific to binomial. Okay, so that's the one is uh, that's kind of expendable. It doesn't have to have that one because it could be geometric uh, if it doesn't meet that one. All right, so binary, are there only two outcomes? So for this problem, yes, there are. Uh, either she makes the serve successfully or she does not. Are they independent? Uh, again, yes, it's telling us in the problem that they're independent. Are there a fixed number of trials? Now, if this isn't met, 
uh, it's possible that there's still Bernoulli trials. It would just be geometric instead of binomial. Uh, in this case, there are a fixed number of trials. It's telling us that she serves 80 times in a match. Uh, and lastly, does this, the probability of success remain constant? Uh, it does. It stays 70%. Every time she serves, there's a 70% chance that her serve will be successful. So this is a Bernoulli trial. More specifically, this is a binomial model Bernoulli trial uh, with these parameters down here at the bottom. So what's the mean and standard deviation for the number of good serves expected? Do you want to go ahead and pause and attempt? Mean is going to be n times p. 80 times 0.7 would give us a mean of 56 serves. Standard deviation is radical NPQ, standard deviation 4.099, or moving forward, we'll call that 4.1. Part B, verify that we can use a normal model to approximate the distribution. So here we want to check the success fail uh, criteria. Make sure that we have enough successes and failures to fill out the edges of that normal model and fill up the tails. So we check NP and NQ. Okay, we see that we NP equals 56, NQ equals 24, and we write a statement like this, and we have to write that. We can't just write this without the sentence below it. Uh, and we write, we expect more than 10 successes and failures, so a normal model can be used. Okay, our normal model would be centered at a mean of 56, that's right in the middle there, uh, and a standard deviation of 4.1, okay? What's the probability that she makes at least 50, uh, 65 first serves? Why don't you guys go ahead and try this? I mean, since you're getting more uh, accomplished at using normal models. Showing the answer now. Well, first off, we would put on 56 in the middle. We're finding the probability of getting 65 or more successful first serves. So we'd want to find a z-score. Hey, remember, we're always subtracting the mean. So 65 comes first. We subtract that mean of 56, divide by that standard deviation. You get a z-score of 2.195. Now, that's the lower boundary, the lower z-score. And then we're putting in an upper, which would be really anything greater than 3. I always use 99. Okay, and that's going to give us uh, a probability when we go into normal CDF of point. 0141. Okay, so there's a 0.01 or 1.41 uh, percent chance that she'll get uh, 65 or at least 65 successful first serves.